The other things that came out of the legal trends report from Clea that I was really excited because I guaranteed, I made a promise during the last podcast that in the top three things that people care about when they are hiring a lawyer was going to be responsiveness. The responsiveness of the lawyer being in the top three. Guy, was I right? You were. Number three, responsiveness. Um right. And again, I you know we we covered responsiveness. the The expectations around speed and responsiveness are only getting higher. So go back and listen to our conversation on sales velocity if you're wondering what we mean by responsiveness. But la- that's the last podcast episode. Go back and listen to that. What was what was number one and two, Gee? Number one was reviews, which Wowzers. I think that. Yeah, I'm not really surprised by that one, right? I mean, I stare at way too many local packs every day. And I will tell you, even when it's like a a local pack of lawyers that I know, even though I know that the quote unquote best lawyer uh, of the three, the reviews jump out. I mean, we are trained by Amazon to shop on reviews. Now, Again, the cynical downside Section 230 problem is is that there's a ton of fake reviews in there, and people shouldn't rely just on reviews. But let me tell you, they do. Every study Google does, every study Amazon does, it always comes back. The reviews, people are using reviews as a big part of the equation in making these decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Even professional services. I mean, it's just, it is. It is what it is. Hate it. You might tell tell me that you're a better lawyer than all the people with all the great reviews, and no one knows it because of the reviews. All right, what was number two, yeah. Guy? Two is proximity. So Aha, like we've this. actually, yeah, we've talked about this one before, especially in the context of like uh, ads and conversion rates. But uh, and you know, the I'll set it up. You know, l- personal injury lawyers always say, you know, where's your who's your target audience? What's your target market? Oh well, you know, for the right injury case, I I'll will go, go in the all state. across Texas, baby. Yeah. I'll go anywhere. Um, but again, for the legal services consumer, locality matters. And this was interesting even in the context of they don't care if you're not at your office. They don't care if you're working from home. They don't care if they're having virtual meetings with you, but they want to know you're nearby. And so things like um, your uh, area code and your phone number, where you actually keep your address, uh, your familiarity with uh, local stuff going on, it matters a lot to lo- legal services consumers. That, for me, was the very pleasant surprise because, you know, I wrote the book Own the Map uh, that went out with the ABA right before COVID happened where, where we literally are not dealing with the office, right? Where you're literally not thinking about the office. And, and the whole premise of my book was that proximity matters. So it was interesting to see that this still has persisted. There's a great quote out of the Legal Trends Report that says, despite clients preferring virtual meetings, so they do not want to come into your office, they do care that you are local. That was a a really big insight for me. And yet, you know, some of the things that we've talked about regularly, Guy, are things around, you know, being involved in the community, right? Um, actually having a presence. That, that, that localized recognition be, is, is a really important thing. And the extent to which, and, and this has been, exa- I, I think the ugly flip side of this is, you know, it's really easy to create that um, new office, you know, an hour and a half away from me that's never staffed and throw up a GBP profile. And all of a sudden, you now have a competitor there. What can you do as the real local business to, to insulate yourself from losing clients to those, those offices that, that really are just the skeletons? I think that is the, the flip side of this. Yeah. And again, not for every practice area, not for every type of client, but I will tell you location, local community, it's an affinity. People like to know. I mean, we talk about this with like, you know, the Chicago guys, like they want to know, oh yeah, you know, Chicago or, you know, Detroit or, or, and really um, those are big markets, but like in my uh, local suburban community, people want to know that stuff. Like, are you from the area? Do you know the area? Are you familiar with it? And and it's not even a logic thing. It's much, you know, talking about the Aristotelian modes of persuasion, it's much more pathos than it is logos. Well, that's that's my philosophy. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's philosophy degree, making of an entrance at Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. It's it's an emotional connection that, and again, lawyers don't think about this, right? Because it's like, well, I have the most experience. I'm the only lawyer who does this. I'm the hardest fighter. 
but again, it can just be like it's someone from my community. Yeah. You know, we go to the same whatever it is, whether it's you know the elementary school. My kids go to the same school. That stuff matters a ton uh, for legal services providers um, or for legal service consumers and. Um, I would, and so what do you do? Well, you've got to do content marketing, include include location as part of your affinity in your content marketing. Talk about what you're doing in the community. Talk about your knowledge. Talk about the places you like to eat. Talk about the events that are going on because that's going to resonate with those local consumers. Yeah, absolutely. The number four was interesting to me. We're going we're gonna to talk through number four because... I feel like there's a lot of resistance to this. And we talked about, you know, upping your hourly rates. But number four was billing type. What the business model you are employing, uh, are you charging hourly? Clients really seem to want and expect options beyond that hourly rate. And yet there has been a digging in of the heels among the legal community to do that. So I think um, the the demand that you're seeing from clients or the or or the the what what they're valuing is a different model by and large of what what many of you are serving up. Yeah, I think that might be a, an opportunity for a future episode on different business models. We've talked we've touched on it in the past, but it's obviously a big thing. Um, and then number five, scheduling availability. This is another one I talk about this we talk about this all the time in the, even in the context of search, but like if you're showing that you're not open after hours, I mean people are working during the day. And so if you can't, if they can only get a hold of, if they're, if you're going to schedule on your own terms, um, you're going to lose out. I mean, it just is what it is. Or, or if you send them a Calendly link, and your next available appointment is three weeks from now, I've, get yeah. ready for them to yeah. move on. Yep. Okay, that's how you should be talking about consultations instead of leads. We can we can come back to that theory over and over again. Money makes a money makes a it makes a yeah, money make a world go round. Yeah, money make a world go round.